developing a society because of all of these different toxins known to affect brain function. We're seeing a society that not only has a lot more people of lower IQ, but a lot fewer people of higher IQ. In other words, a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. So everyone's sort of mediocre. That leaves them dependent on government because they can't excel. We have these people of lower IQ who are totally dependent. Then we have this mass of people who are going to believe anything they're told because they can't really think clearly. And very few people of very high IQ who have good cognitive function who can figure this all out. And that's what they want. So, you know, you can kind of piece it together as to why they are so insistent in spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars of propaganda money to dumb down society. Sixty-six percent of the United States residents' public water is fluoridated. It is known to have tremendous effects on bone cancer, joint problems, bone weakness, lowered estrogen and testosterone levels, and dental fluorosis, which is yellowing of the teeth and pitting in the enamel. Wouldn't it make more sense to enhance public water with vitamins, which are meant to be ingested, to promote overall health? Rather than putting such a toxic chemical in our water with a bogus explanation that it will improve our dental health. We now know that fluoride causes more dental problems than it solves. Something doesn't seem right about this. Do you honestly believe that these companies care deeply enough for the people to spend large amounts of their own money to fluoridate public water when the people already purchased their own toothpaste? But there's a difference between toothpaste and drinking water. We don't ingest toothpaste. If you go to any hardware store and look at any rat poison product, you will only find one ingredient sodium fluoride. It is the most toxic ionic molecule outside of potassium dichromate. Now Danon along with other companies have begun fluoridating bottled water. It is becoming increasingly difficult to get away from. And the fact that fluoride is also used in many prescription antidepressants shows that it eliminates aggression and motivation in people. Fluoride, to my knowledge as a physician, has absolutely no biological benefit whatsoever. Uh, but one of the significant things is that the, the Russians uh, carried out all sorts of experiments on the uh, people living in the Gulag. One of them, of course, was to fluoridate the water. Why? You fluoridate the water, why people are not uh, as aggressive as they ordinarily would be. In fact, what is the active ingredient in Prozac that is so widely distributed in America today? Well, it's a fluoride compound. And now, we are finding that public water, nationwide, is showing up with arsenic, lead, cadmium and thermonium, which is a radioactive form of lead. Cancer, lowered sex drive, birth defects, sedation, and brain defects? Does this not sound like a wonder drug for anyone aiming to control a population? It's, it's quite astonishing, Paul, uh, the degree to which environmentalists have not been educated about fluoride. You know, people have an unconscious trust in their doctor or their dentist and if you can persuade doctors and dentists that fluoride is safe and good then you're, you're, you're uh, able to reach the rest of the nation. People believe they're doctors and dentists and that was a way of promoting fluoride for Bernays. Fluoride was killing their cattle, destroying their crops. Uh, fluoride given to rats had produced bone cancer and liver cancer and that those results had been doctored to make it look as though fluoride hadn't caused as much cancer. The pattern that we saw it typically is what we see with other neurotoxic agents that are well known to cause a hypoactivity or uh, a memory problem or an IQ problem. When I first presented the results of these studies, um, one of the uh, individuals sitting and listening to the results, he says, do you have any idea what you're saying? And he says, you're telling us that we're reducing the IQ of children. And basically I said, yes.
Dr. Bill Osmondson. I'm a general and cosmetic dentist and have been a dentist for 30 years. Before that, I received a master's in public health in nutrition and health education. For the first 25 years of practice, I promoted water fluoridation aggressively. I thought I saw the benefits. It wasn't until I actually looked at the information myself that I began to realize that fluoridation was a problem. One of the first things I did is I looked at my tube of toothpaste. It says drug facts. I know it's a drug. If I were to give it to you, it'd have to be a prescription. That's for swallowing. When it comes to toothpaste, it also says don't swallow. And if you do swallow, contact the poison control center. Well, the amount of fluoride that they're talking about is a pea-sized amount of fluoride. You probably don't see that in, in, in advertisements, a pea-sized amount of fluoride. Usually when I see an advertisement, it looks more like a Dairy Queen ice cream cone. That amount is a quarter milligram of fluoride. Well, that's the same amount of fluoride as what we find in eight ounces of water. Quarter milligram of fluoride, quarter milligram of fluoride, don't swallow. If you do, call the poison control center. One of the things that concerns me is water fluoridation for infants. The American Dental Association and Center for Disease Control recommend that infants not receive water for drinking nor for making their formula. It's 250 times more concentrated in fluoride than mother's milk. We shouldn't fluoridate water and harm our most vulnerable. The next thing I looked at was dental fluorosis. These are the white and brown spots on the teeth. The only thing that causes dental fluorosis is fluoride. Too much fluoride ingested, usually during the developing years, birth to about eight years of age. When I see people coming in to have treatment for dental fluorosis, I mention to them that they have had too much fluoride. And this is an indication that the rest of their body has probably had too much fluoride also, their bones and in the rest of their organs. Damage from dental fluorosis is not disputed. Everyone agrees that too much fluoride can cause dental fluorosis. About one-third of children are now experiencing fluorosis according to the CDC. The next thing I wanted to look at was benefits. What are the benefits of it? I've heard reports of 20 to 40 percent, 60 percent, 80 percent tooth reduction with water fluoridation. So what is the benefit of water fluoridation? And I had a close look at several factors. One, comparing different countries of the world we can see that no matter what we do on fluoridation, whether the country fluoridates or no fluoride at all, decay is reduced the same amount in all countries. We can compare states in the United States. And we can see on a graph that as they're plotted in order of increased amount of fluoridation in the state, fluoridation doesn't make any difference. We have the same amount of good health in the states regardless of their fluoridation. Same thing for counties and other locations. That was disturbing to me. If there's no benefit, well, why are we fluoridating?